What is up VR lovers and welcome to a new tutorial with a subject that I wanted to cover for a long long time and it's how to make a keyboard in VR. Of course making a good keyboard is not that easy but I think I finally found a way to make one that's both easy to set up and will fit any type of VR interaction with Ray or Poke. But anyway, don't forget to subscribe down below with the bell to not miss any future VR tutorial. And if you'd like to get the source code of this project as well as exclusive content like this tutorial on how to recreate a spellcasting system with both voice and movement recognition, you can join us on Patreon, link in the description below. But without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I'm here in an almost empty Unity project. As you can see, the only thing that I did is make a XR origin, which will have as interactor, some Ray interactor and poke interactor that we will use to interact with the user interface as I show it in this video that should pop up on your screen. But now let me show you how we should be able to make an input field to be able to write something on and which will tell us the issue that we may have in VR. So for this, let's right click in the hierarchy, go to UI and then select here input field text mesh pro. If you need to download TMP, so text mesh pro, just click here on import TMP in essentials. Once it is downloaded, we don't need the second one. So let's simply close these windows. But now, as you can see, we have a big UI showing in our scene. So let's double click on it to position it like this. For now, as you can see, it is set as screen space overlay. But as we want to see it in VR, we need to set it to world space instead. Next, for the scale, I'm going to set it to 0 0.01 on all axis. Perfect, and we can reset its position to 0, 0. There you go. Now, if we double click on it again, as you can see, it is part of our world. And now make sure that the input field is also at 0, 0. So let's set 0 on the X and 0 on the Y. And here it is, finally, we can see the input field. So let's select back our canvas and move the input field a bit in front of the player. Like this, this should do the job. Now, the next step is to be able to interact with this user interface. But for this, as I shown it in a previous tutorial as well, we need to do this in two steps. The first step is to go in the graphic recaster of the canvas and we can remove it. Instead, add a track device graphic recaster like this. The second step is to go in the event system and here replace the standalone input module by the XR UI input module. As you can see, we have a bunch of input action reference that we can set over there. And to do so, if you've downloaded the Unity XR toolkit with the starter asset, you should be able to simply click here and select the XRI default XR UI input module preset that should show over there. And as you can see, it has auto filled everything. So now you should be able to interact with the input field if we click on play. There you go. So as you can see, if I point the ray on my end to the user interface, I can interact with it. But you can see the big issue that we have is that if I click on it, I have no keyboard to type something inside this input field. Of course, I can use the keyboard on my computer to write something like hello. And which is kind of hard because I'm not seeing what I'm writing right now. But maybe your player will not have a keyboard around you. And to make it more convenient, the best thing to do is to create a VR keyboard. So to continue on that explanation, making a VR keyboard is not that complicated. In fact, if you go to the canvas, you right click, go to UI and then click on button text mesh pro. There you go. We have made a simple button. And what we can do is simply replace the text of this button by a letter like Q, for example. And we can scale this button by pressing on the T key and then move it around, duplicate it and create one button per letter on the keyboard. And the goal is that when you click on a button, it will update the text here on this input field. But of course, that means a lot of work to already set up the button, as you can see. And it even gets worse when you take into consideration numbers, symbols, capital letters and more. So I think the better solution, if we want to get further, is to use a pre-made keyboard that we will be able to set up. 
And here is the keyboard in question. So on this GitHub page, you will be able to find here this MRTK keyboard. So MRTK is a VR SDK that is made by Microsoft. And here on this GitHub page, you will see only the keyboard that you can use on this SDK and that we will use for this project. So now let's see how we can download, import this keyboard and use it on our input field. Okay, so to download the MRTK keyboard, we can go on this GitHub page that you will find in the description below, of course. And then you can go here on code and click on download zip. There you go. Once it is downloaded, you can unzip it. And now you should be able to have this folder right here with the MRTK folder, scene folder, text mesh pro. But in our case, we have already downloaded the text mesh pro folder. So we can simply delete it like this. But now everything is ready to import this folder inside Unity. We can simply drag it to our Unity project and put it on the project folders. There you go. Okay, so to find this keyboard, we need to go to MRTK, Keyboard, MRTK, SDK, Experimental, Non-Native Keyboard, Prefabs, and here it is the non-native keyboard that we want to use. So let's drag it in our hierarchy. Ta-da! As you can see, it is at the center of our game. Now let's maybe move it just under the input field that we set up earlier. Perfect. This should do the trick. Okay. And so as you can see, this keyboard is in fact made using a Unity user interface system. So it's basically a canvas which has a lot of different buttons, like I just told you earlier. So it's very simple to use. You can move it in your scene anywhere you want. You can even scale it to make it fit the size that you want. But of course, because it is a canvas, we want to interact with it. And to interact with it, it's as earlier. We need to go in the graphic recaster, remove this component, and instead add a track device graphic recaster. There you go. And now we should be able to interact with this keyboard. As you can see, if I click on play, the keyboard is deactivated. And if I try to enable it over there, it does not work. So to simply show the keyboard, we can show it when we click on the input field by going to the input field over there. And as you can see, we have the unselect event here. So let's click on the plus button and drag here our non-native keyboard. And there, if we go to non-native keyboard, and then present keyboard. Now, if we maximize these windows and click on play, we should be able to open the keyboard when we click here on this input field with the trigger button. So let's click on it. And as you can see, this is beautiful. We have the keyboard showing over there. And as you can see, if I select one of the button and try to write something, it works. I can also discard a certain letter. And I can select if I want these letters to be a capital. I can go in the symbols. And I can even change the symbol that I want to say. And here I have all the numbers that I can write. So as you can see, it is really complete. And as you can see, this keyboard is really powerful. And of course, you can tweak it as you want. For example, you can change its color. You can also change the order of the letters if you want maybe a Nazar T keyboard instead of a QWERTY. But as you can see here, we have a little issue. If we leave play mode, we should be able to see it. Because if we go to the native keyboard, we have here a setting that is close on inactivity, which will close automatically the keyboard after 15 seconds, as you just saw from one second earlier. So we don't want this, of course. So let's simply uncheck this boolean. But now the other problem is that when I was writing on the keyboard, it was updating this input field and not this one. So the one we are trying to write on. So now it is time to fix this issue and let's see how we can present the keyboard and link the keyboard to this input field and not the input field that it is attached. So the first step of doing so is to simply remove the input field that is attached to the non-native keyboard. So as you can see, it is part of the keyboard background. If we go to search, we can already remove the image over there. It will be the background image. Then we can go in the input field right here and disable it again. 
And then we have the background that we can disable as well. And so just like this, we only have the backspace showing on this particular object. Oh, and one last thing before I forget, if we go to here, the search game object, make sure to disable here the axis slider, which will make this uh, game object move left or right. So something we don't want. And just like this, we only have the backspace button. Okay, so that's already one thing. Now, the second thing that we want is to present this keyboard and link it to this input field. So for this, let's go back to our input field. And I'm going to remove here this on select event by clicking on the minus button because we are going to do so inside a custom component. So let's click on add component and I'm going to create a new component called show keyboard. Perfect. Let's double click on this component to open it. And so this component will be very simple. We need, of course, a reference to the input field. So at the top, let's write using TM Pro. And then for the variable, we want a private TMP input field that we can call input field. And we can get it at the start of the game by doing input field equals get component of type TMP input field. Perfect. And now we are going to do the same thing as we did manually, which is open the keyboard when we select it. So for this, let's do input field dot on select dot add listener. And there we can add a function that will open the keyboard. So for this, let's create a new public void open keyboard. There you go. And inside this function, we want, of course, to present the keyboard. So to access the keyboard parameters, we need to go at the top and add a new namespace again, which will be very long. So it's using Microsoft dot mixed And there it is. Now we can access the non-native keyboard, get the instance, which is the singleton. So the instance of the non-native keyboard in our scene and call the present keyboard function from earlier. And this is where things get important and why we did it in a custom component. We can assign the input field of the keyboard to be the input field that we have on this game object. So we can do for this non native keyboard.instance.input field equals input field. There you go. Oh, and one last thing, as you can see in the prison keyboard, we can give as a parameter a certain text, which will be the text that the keyboard will have at the start. And so something that we can already do is give it the input field text so that we can close and restart the keyboard as we want. And it will keep the same text as it had before opening it. Okay, finally, we need to link the open keyboard function with the add listener. So if we simply write open keyboard over there, as you can see, we have an error because this open keyboard function need to have a string parameters. So we can create a fake string component by simply writing X little arrow to the right and calling the open keyboard function. And this line basically creates a fake function that will take the input that this on select want, which is a string and will call the open keyboard. Okay, so everything is now done. Let's save and go back to Unity. Now, if we click on play. Okay, so let's try to select the input field. And as you can see, the keyboard shows as earlier, but if I select one of the letters, as you can see, this time it updates the code input field. But as you can see, we have another issue is that we can write something, but when we try to press on the enter here, it resets the text. So let me show you how to quickly fix this. And to do so, we actually need to enter inside the non-native keyboard script that you will find on the non-native keyboard prefab. So let's double click on it to open it. And as you can see, this script is well documented, which is a good thing. But what we are trying to find in the script is the on disable function that is right there. And as you can see, there is a big problem with this function because it is coding the clear function, which will completely clear the text of the input field. We don't want this. So let's comment this line of code by adding this to slash before end. And now if we save and go back once again to Unity, as you can see, I can select, open the keyboard, write something random like this, press on enter, 
and now it has correctly saved the keyboard text and we can reopen it and try to update it as well so everything is working perfectly. Okay, so at this point, we made a nice VR keyboard that works with symbol, letters, numbers, and everything. But we can go even further because when we select here the input field, it simply toggles here the keyboard and place it over there. But what if, in some cases, we wanted the keyboard to come close to us so that we can, instead of using a ray, use the poke interactor that is new to Unity XR Interaction 2.3 and that we wanted to poke here instead of selecting each letter with array to write on the keyboard. So let me show you how we can make this. So for this, let's go back to our input field and open the show keyboard function. So to be able to tweak the position of the keyboard, I'm going to need two variables. The first one is a public float called distance that we can set at 0 0.5. And the second one is a public float called vertical offset that we can set to minus 0 0.5. So now when we open the keyboard, we can set its position based on these two parameters. So let me show you a quick way to do this. So just to give you a quick example, if this is our player, right? And this is our input field, we can place the keyboard by simply take the camera of the player, right? And place the keyboard in front of the camera like this and just offset it vertically to place it a bit down below. So to get this position, we'll need to addition some vector. The first vector that we want is the position of the camera. Then the second vector that we want is the direction of the camera. And then the third vector that we need is a certain vertical offset. So by combining these three green vectors that you can see, we will be able to define the position of the keyboard that we want. So in the script, all this looks is first we can get the direction that we are looking at. So for this at the top, I'm going to create a public transform called position source. There you go. And so to get this direction, we can simply do position source dot forward. But in this case, we want the direction to be always horizontal. So we can simply do so by doing direction dot y equals zero. And then renormalize this vector three by calling direction dot normalized. There you go. Finally, we can get the target position by doing vector three target position equals the position source dot position. So this is this vector right there. Then we can add it the direction multiplied by the distance. So this is the second vector, which is this one. And finally, we can add it the last vector, which will be vector three dot up multiplied by vertical offset. There you go. This is our final target position. And now it is very simple. We can simply reposition the keyboard by calling a function inside the non-native keyboard, which is non-native keyboard dot instance dot reposition keyboard and give it our target position. And just like this, we have succeeded to change the position of our keyboard based on the distance and the vertical offset. So let's say that for this input field, we don't want the keyboard to get near us. So in this case, we can set the position source to be the input field and the distance to be zero. So this will not move the keyboard compared to the input field. But for the vertical offset, we can move the keyboard as it is down below by writing minus 1.5 maybe. But now let's select this input field, press on Ctrl D to open it and maybe move it a bit up right there. And now let's say that for this second input field, we want the keyboard to be near us. So instead here of the position source, we can go in our XR origin and drag the main camera over there. For the distance, we can maybe set it to 0.5 so that it will be very near us. And for the vertical offset, minus 0.5 would be great. And now let's see how these two input fields compare by clicking on play. Okay, so here you go. If I select the second input field, Oh, 
as you can see, we have a big keyboard, but it still works. It still plays this keyboard over there. But if I select the first one, as you can see, it simply plays the keyboard near me. So except from the weird size, everything is working well. And so let's see how we can change the maximum number of scale. And if we go to our non-native keyboard, as you can see, we have in the position in file, a max scale and a min scale. Because when we are calling the reposition keyboard function from earlier, it is actually also rescaling the keyboard based on these two parameters. So for our keyboard, instead of a max scale of three, let's set it to maybe one. And for the min scale, let's set it to 0.3. Perfect. So this should make our keyboard not that big anymore. So let's see how this works by clicking on play. As you can see now, if I select the first input field, I have the keyboard in front of me. So that's perfect. And for the second one, the keyboard is over there and the size is way better. So as you can see, even if I move, everything still works great. I have the two keyboard always positioned at the correct place. So this is very, very powerful. As you can see, I can still interact with the keyboard. But now, thanks to the keyboard that is now near us, I can also trigger the poking. Ta-da! As you can see, I can use the poke interactor to write inside the input field. That's awesome. And there you go. As you can see, we are getting further and further into these VR keyboard things. But there is also one last thing that I want to show you. Because as you can see, normally we should be able to see here a little caret that shows us when we can write. But when we try to update our keyboard or that we click outside of this input field, the little caret disappears and only appears back when I click again. So here it is. Now we can fix this inside the settings of the input field. So if I go to the input field and that I select them both, I need here to uncheck the on focus select all and then also uncheck the reset on the activation. Because now if I click on play again, if I select one of the input field and that I write, as you can see, the caret is still showing, which is very helpful because now I can simply move it to where I want and I can remove the part of the text that I want. I can even select a part of the text and remove it. So this is very powerful. But the issue is that when I press on enter, the caret is still present. And so, to conclude this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can fix this little issue and make this caret hide when we enter the keyboard. Okay, so to do so, let's go in the show keyboard function and I'm going to create a new function which will be public void set caret color alpha. As the name suggests, this function will change the alpha color of the caret on our input field and we can give it a float value for the value of the alpha. So to change the color, we can do input field dot custom caret color equals true. This will make sure that we are using a custom caret color. And then let's get its color by doing caret color equals input field caret color. And then do caret color dot a, so the alpha channel equals value. And then reassign the input field dot caret color to be the caret color that we just modified. And there it is. And now very simply, when we open the keyboard, we can set the caret color to be one so that we can show the caret. But when we close the keyboard, we want to set it to zero. Now to trigger something when we close the keyboard, we can do so by doing non-native keyboard dot instance dot on close. And now if we write plus equals and press on tab one time, as you can see, this has automatically created a function that will be called when we are closing the keyboard. And so instead of this line, we want to call set caret color alpha zero. So this will hide, of course, the caret.
And now inside this function, we also want to remove the instance on closed function that it's called. So let's simply do non native keyboard dot instance dot on close. And this time minus equals here the same name. And so here it is. Everything should be now ready. Let's find out if our caret is finally hiding when we are closing our keyboard. So let's go back to Unity and click on play once again. Okay, so now if I click on the second text, as you can see, the caret is showing. I can write some random things. The caret is still over there and I can even replace it using the ray or I can replace it using here these two arrows. That's really cool. But now if I enter, as you can see, it works. The caret is not showing anymore, but if I select it again, there it is. Now it is showing, so everything is working perfectly. And congratulations, because you've managed to make a very cool and strong VR keyboard for your game. Okay, guys, I hope that you enjoy watching this project. And if you did, make sure to leave a like down below. The source code is available on my Patreon, where you can also support my work and get access to exclusive content. But anyway, thank you for watching till the end and see you soon. Bye bye.